Welcome to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church of Alexandria, Virginia. Here are our weekly announcements. The December Bible study series is Who Is This? Who is Jesus to you? For the month of December, join us every Wednesday at noon and every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study. The Women's Ministry Online Fellowship for December with special guest Jovita Shepherd has been rescheduled for January 4th. The Mount Pleasant Youth Ministry in partnership with the Mason District Police Station is hosting the annual Pajama Toy Drive. Accepting donations December 4th through the 11th, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Right here at Mount Pleasant, we're collecting toys and pajamas to be distributed to needy families. Won't you join us? The Church School Ministry cordially invites you to the virtual presentation, Sounds of Christmas, featuring the early elementary through high school students. Sounds of Christmas will be next Sunday, December 11th at 9 a.m. on Zoom. Join us for Christmas worship service, Sunday, December 25th, yes, that's Christmas, at 10 a.m. We will have a worship experience in the Word, a musical concert by the Mount Pleasant Choir, and the lighting of the Advent candle. There will be no church school on Christmas. The Mount Pleasant Baptist Church Federal Credit Union is having a holiday loan special, available now through December 31st. Rates start as low as 5%. For more information, contact the credit union. Our weekly telephone prayer meetings are Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Fridays at 6.30 a.m. Submit your prayer request at prayer at mtpleasantbc.org. Meeting details are on the screen. We invite you to visit our website at mtpleasantbc.org to stay up to date regarding our events and announcements. You can also download the Mount Pleasant app on the Google Play or App Store. Again, welcome to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church of Alexandria, where Reverend Dr. Carl M. Johnson is our pastor and where we are expanding for a greater work. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy 1st of December. And if you know like I know, there are so many reasons to celebrate this season as we look to God. Good morning, God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are here, God, to feel you. We are here, God, to celebrate you, God. And as we celebrate you, we ask that you come and be present and sit with us and celebrate with us and involve all that we are, God, so that we can honor you, God. We ask that you come and sit with every person who's worried about what am I going to have to put under the tree. God, we ask that you sit with every person who's worried about what am I going to have to put on the food table, God. We ask that you come and sit with every person who says, I have so much, what more can I do? God, we ask that you come and sit with our pastor that, and give him whatever it needs he needs to make preaching easy, God. We ask you to just come and be with us as we celebrate you on this day and in this season, God. In this season of celebrating your son Jesus' birth, we ask that you just come and be with us because we know that that is the greatest gift of all, God. And with that gift that you have given to us, let us not keep it to ourselves, but let us give it to everyone that we see, everyone that we meet, by invoking that spirit of God and showing them love and kindness and charity. We thank you, God, that we know that you are going to be with us. 
in everything that we do and everything that we say. We honor you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, God, amen. Today is the second day of our Advent service celebration. Advent means coming, and in this season we prepare for the coming of Christ. 
One way to celebrate Advent is by lighting the Advent candles to remind us of the gifts Christ brings to the world. The scripture reading for week two comes from Isaiah 7:14 and Isaiah 52, 7. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Today we relight the purple candle, symbolizing hope, and we light a second purple candle to symbolize peace. Peace is the one of God's gifts to us. John the Baptist, who was a prophet, calling the people of Israel to repent, to find peace with God. As we light this second candle, we are reminded that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, and we are to be his messengers of peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, make us instruments of your peace. Heavenly Father, when things are not going according to your will, please be our guide. As those around us create discord and conflict and discomfort, we pray for understanding and for peace. Heavenly Father, those who lead our homes and our schools and our government talk peace. But Heavenly Father, we pray that we're able to show your peace by our actions. Heavenly Father, continue to keep us safe as we follow your will. Heavenly Father, please help us to remember that we need not be troubled or afraid, for Christ Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Heavenly Father, it is in Jesus' name that we offer this prayer, and we all say, Amen. One verse of Silent Night.
those who are online, uh, across the, wherever you may be, welcome, 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 all right? 
This is a church service, no matter where you are. We are praising the Lord, no matter where you are. That's what we're supposed to be doing, no matter where we are, right? So we all love the Lord. We've been open, we're ready. We've got dancing, we've got music, we've got to have some preaching later. So um, just wanted to go ahead and let you all know that you are welcome to do as you please. And for those, you know, who are at home, if you're eating breakfast, I appreciate you. Uh, if you got a lot of things going on, I also appreciate you. As long as you're getting the word, we don't care how you're getting it, as long as you're getting it. And so we welcome you this morning. We are also heading, uh, preparing for our offering as well. There are many ways to give. For those who are in, uh, in the sanctuary, I believe there's going to be some plates coming around to you. No? No plates? Okay. Um, there's going to... Ah, there's different ways to give. You can text, you can do it on your mobile app, you can go onto the website, or you can mail it in. Um, either way, there are many ways for you to give. Um, not just give of, of your time and your talent, but also of your funds as well. So we are thanking you for that as well. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Father, for this time of giving and worship, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for bring, being the Prince of Peace, Lord God. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our hope, Heavenly Father, in a time of sorrow, Lord God. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, for being the light of the world, Lord God, the light of our life, Lord God. And Heavenly Father, we are just grateful, Heavenly Father. I know we are supposed to be thanking you for the gifts that have been offered up today, Lord God. But Lord God, we just thank you for life, Lord God, because there's no greater gift that we can give you other than a thank you, Lord God, and to serve you wholeheartedly, Lord God, and to give you our whole hearts, Lord God, and to give it up to you, Lord God, because that's what you're seeking for, Lord God. And so we are grateful at this moment, Lord God, and always, Lord God, oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, that we give you an offering of our hearts, Lord God. Heavenly Father, because that's what you're seeking. So, Lord God, we give you our hearts today. Lord, we give you all that we have today, Lord God. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who were able to give, Lord God. But, Lord God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who gave you their heart, Lord God, and continue to give you their heart and their service. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless your holy name. Amen.
Come on, put your hands together. Amen. As we come to praise the name of the Lord, and these brothers are singing up a storm today. Amen. How many of you want new life? I tell you, God will give it to you. Yes, he will. Certainly, it's just good to see some, everyone in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning because God has been good to us. He has not only blessed us uh, just in our good health and strength, but he's a blessed us and allowed us to come into the sanctuary one more time. Amen. Just a couple of years ago, it was, it was just a thought in our mind. But now God has made available for us to come and give him praise in the sanctuary hallelujah i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord amen it's a privilege to be in god's presence among the saints of the living amen while we're serving or we're living in the land of the dead we come into the house uh, of the lord in the land of the living those who have cast their their souls upon the Lord, and he has renewed our strength, allowed us to run on just a little while longer. Amen. Listen, I'm not going to tarry too long today. Uh, I'm going to get out of your way, but I do have just a little word for the Lord as we start uh, this season. Uh, fastly approaching uh, until our Christmas celebrations. Uh, there's a series of messages that I, that I have, and, and, and on last, last week, uh, Reverend uh, Chris White preached and started off with hope. Um, today, we recognize the peace uh, that God brings, not only in, the, in our lives and personal spaces, but also in the house of the Lord. Amen. And God brings peace to the world. And so we are grateful for that. So we're going to dive in 2 Kings uh, chapter 4. It's a familiar passage of scripture, but I want to bring it back to our memories uh, in the season. Amen. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, I'm going to read just verse 2. Uh, for uh, your hearing, I'll be preaching verses 1 down through 7. And it reads this way from the New King James Version and says, um, so Elijah says to her, uh, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Today, my brother and sister, I want to preach from the subject. God is working on my little bit. God is working on my little bit. Amen. Amen. I mean, give me a little more in the monitors. Amen. And God is working on my little bit. Come on, let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you, dear God, for just allowing us to be in this sanctuary one more time. It's a privilege to be in this house of worship. But we have come to worship your name in spirit and also in truth. But on this Sunday morning, Lord, I need you more than I ever needed you before. Likewise, Lord, time and time again, as I called on your name, God, I have expectations, but I believe that you are about to speak and speak volumes because you laid this message on my heart for somebody in this season, somebody in this time of struggle in their lives. God, I need to preach this word like you want me to preach your word to those who may hear because they need a word of encouragement, a word of hope. And so, God, I just pray that you move me out of your way, but allow the spirit to move in this place and to have its way. We love you, we honor you, we praise you. But God, on this day, preach like you never preached before. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we pray. And we say together, amen. Amen. God is working on my little bit. As we have come on the Sunday, I'm keenly aware that we are all preparing for a season of celebration. Uh, the season of celebration of Christmas. But in the season of celebrating of Christmas, we are thinking about bringing gifts to loved ones and friends and family bringing gifts to God. And as we are thinking about bringing gifts, our reality is 
is that we're living in a world or the time in the season where inflation has gone up. We are paying more at the, well, a little less at the pump today than we were a few days ago. But we are food is, is, is high. Uh, we had our family over yesterday and I was pricing uh, some of the items as my wife, uh, she buys groceries each week and, and it's up to me to balance the book, but she purchased the items. And, uh, and, and, and every week I said, baby, the, the, you, you, we gonna pass the grocery budget. She said, well, you don't buy the food anymore. And so she made it keenly aware things are going up. And likewise, we all have, are experiencing the pinch. We all are experiencing the uptick in the prices. But yet our, our salaries and our budgets remain the same. Uh, we are trying to do more with less. We're trying to make it as though we used to make it a while back or so. But things are tight and stuff is getting bad in some sense. But I'm also reminded that if you have already been in a pinch and there's an uptick on every leaning side, it even makes it worse for some. I, I know I'm talking to the wrong crowd today because you guys look like y'all got it all together. Uh, someone mentioned to me that there was a many of uh, foreign cars pulling up on the parking lot. And so it tells me that he is, uh, you all are doing well. So perhaps online today, I need to talk to some sisters, some brother that are going through a season in their lives. Because in this season in which we live in, uh, we, we're keenly aware that there's a struggle. We're keenly aware there is some difficulty among us. And so likewise, the woman in the story, she brings to our attention about the life struggles in which she is currently in. But I need to not only talk about financial struggle, but I need to talk about faith struggle, where our faith needs to be examined. We need to take inventory on the little bit of faith we might have. But I'm also reminded, Jarvis, that it's not just an emotional struggle at times and financial struggle at times, but circumstances will cause us to feel a certain way. This circumstance in our text today, we're talking about uh, living in deficiency. Deficiency is a real item. Deficiency is a real thing. And it causes the people of God at times to go in one of three ways. The Bible gives this illustration that this woman had deficiency in her life. But if you live in deficiency for quite some time, it causes us to feel the pinch and the pain, but also gives us a certain mentality about what God can do in our lives. This woman had limited options. She had limited options and such so it produced an emotion, um, emotional struggles. But then she also took on a different attitude or a viewpoint of what God could do because she lowered had her expectations. Not only does it affect us because we have limited options, but then we have lower expectations. But then sometimes deficiency can last for generations, pass it down from one generation to the next because we are living on deficiency. And so I want to submit to you today that we need whatever you got, whatever you have, is enough for God to work with you. It's enough for God to take it and to make it and stretch it. I wish I had some mama in here today and I understood my story because not all of y'all have been living on plenty. Some mama in here today have taken what they had and they have stretched it and made it to the other side. I believe we have a witness in the house because what, 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 what the writer in the Bible says in 2 Kings, as we see Elijah the prophet come on the scene, he is now taken over for Elijah. 
there's been a new rulership coming on the scene and we find that God is still on his throne. He's changed the leadership, but now the prophet Elijah is on the scene and he comes to this woman in the story. But we find out that when he comes to this woman, he finds her in a state of panic, finds her in a state of distress. Here it is in verse one, it says, a certain woman, a wife of a son of the prophet cried out to Elijah saying, uh, saying to him, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that my servant uh, feared the Lord and the creditors is coming to make my two sons to be their slaves. And so the woman we find in the text, not only is she living in deficiency, but she finds herself in a pinch. And here now in the story, it begins to unpack, according to the word of God, that she comes out of desperation. Many of us come to God many different times out of desperation where you're desperate financially, desperate by emotions, desperate, de desperate from a relationship or two. And we come to God seeking answers because we know that God has a way of making things better. But perhaps somebody has been impacted by life such so that when you come, you may not have the faith you used to have. You may not have the, the tenacity or the love of God within you when you come. But this woman here, we find in the text, she comes to the man and the messenger of God, the, the prophet of the day by the name of Elijah. But when she comes, she comes and she has a decoration or two to, to, to this prophet. He said, she says to him, your servant, my husband is dead. So we find her, first of all, dealing with the fact of a loss of a loved one. Lost her husband, her covering lost her protector, her provider, lost everything that she had in the man in which she had spent her life with, found herself at a position where we find her now coming to the prophet of God, having to seek out some attention, seek out some assistance, seek out the man of God because she's going through a horrendous storm in her life. And so here it is now, I don't know what your storm may be, but this woman that lost her husband, he's dead. And you know on top of that, when one thing go wrong, it seems like everything else seemed to come its way. Lost her husband, lost the man in her life. She's longing for the relationship, but then here it is, her financial situation has gotten bad. It's one thing on top of another thing lost a man and then then here comes the creditors knocking at the door saying you have a debt to pay and the levitical writer says that if there is ever a debt to be paid during that day that you can take the sons of that woman to put him in slavery to pay off the debt for the family and then in her mind, she may have thought about her boys paying back the debt, but perhaps only in the 50th year of Jubilee is when they were released from any kind of debt. We don't know quite where she landed in the midst of the course of time, but if she was later in her age or later in her age, perhaps she may not have seen them boys anymore. So not only did she lose a husband, not only was she financially in difficulty, but then the threat of her boys being lost. What do you do when you find yourself in that kind of fix or that kind of pinch in your life? What do you do when you find yourself in a storm? And I just believe on today, somebody's in this room today and you understand that, that when this Christmas season has come around, and you'll wonder how I, I, I can barely make it now, but then the expectation from my children and my relatives are increasingly even the more. What do you do in this time? Well, I just came by to let you know somebody in this room that God can work on your little bit. Because if you have what you have and you put it in his hands, God will work that thing out. 
But watch the story. The Bible says that this woman had come to the man of God, the prophet of God, and, he, and she begins to have a conversation with him in verse 2. So Elijah says to her, now uh, let's take inventory. What, what shall I do? What, what can I help you with? And, and he comes to her and, and from the beckoning from this woman, and he says, but what do you have in your house? Uh, what do you have in your house? And, and, and she says to him, uh, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And so, Jarvis, I, 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 I began to research this jar of oil, and I, and I, I came to fruition. It's about this size. Uh, it, was, it was some anointing oil that her husband had in the upper cabinet pushed in the back of the cabinet that he used to use to anoint in the sanctuary. Uh, and, and, and she determined, Sister Josetta, that, that this little flash of oil that she had uh, was, was simply but a jar of oil. And so my brother, my sister, I, I, I want you to understand that this was no cooking oil. This was all they anointed uh, the folk of God with. Uh, it was all that they took in the service and the sanctuary. Uh, but she determines in her mind it was only but a jaw hole. But what I want to suggest to you all today, my brother and my sister, be careful how you determine uh, when you're dealing with the anointing oil. Uh, uh, because in your mind, it may just be a bottle of oil. But if there is the anointing oil of God, uh, uh, I, I want to suggest to you that there is something different about the anointing oil of God. And here it is in the Bible. The Bible says she just determined that this oil was just a little bit. Uh, it was just a small portion. It was just something her husband, or she might have seen her husband use when he was praying over the saints. Uh, just something that she, he used when he went to church and folk would come down and said, I, I, I need a healing. And she took the oil and, and anointed her head with the oil. It, it was just something small in her mind, the little bit that she had in the cat. But now watch with it. Come with me, if you will, uh, to the text in verse 3 that says, But the prophet of God tells her, he says, Then he says, uh, Go and borrow some vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, and empty the vessels, and do not uh, gather just a few of them. And when you have come into the house, shut the door behind you and pour it into the vessels, and set it aside until they are full. Uh, and so here it is now. I, I don't know about y'all, but it blew my mind when I was reading this again. Now, I've read this before, and, and, I, and, I, and, and Dr. Vaughn, I've seen it uh, with my own two eyes once before. But, but what really got me this time was this, that we're coming up on Christmas. Uh, we're coming up on a season of giving. We are coming up on a season where we share gifts. And folk bring you gifts on your job. Folk give you gifts in your family meetings and folk give you gifts uh, just from your neighborhood and, and, and but, but when you ain't got nothing uh, when you don't have much uh, it's hard to uh, 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 just uh, uh, come up with some money to give other folk something out of your little bit and, and so we find this woman having to deal with this thing that, but she, she was in the midst of surviving life uh, with this little bit and so but but I got to give you three things and I'm out I, I'm three things and I need to leave with you on the day but listen here the Bible says that she told the man of God and the man of God asked her the question what do you have in your house and she discovers all she has is a little bit in a flash of anointing oil and so she tells him what she had. And he says, now, this is what I want you to do. I, I need you to go to your neighbors 
and asked him for some empty jars. Well, the first thing I want to deal with today, Doc, is, is the fact that the prophet asked her, first of all, to be obedient. Uh, be obedient to what the man of God had said. Be, be obedient to the word of God because the prophet knew that if she were to put her trust in God, then, then out of her obedience, uh, things can get better. Uh, I need to share that with somebody in the room today because sometimes we feel as though nothing can happen in our lives, but, but out of our obedience unto the Lord, stuff can shift and change. Uh, stuff can get better. And I want to suggest to you because I am a representation of who God is. And so that classifies me as a messenger or man of God. And so out of the obedience in which I see here in the text, things can get better. Here it is. Now watch this. The Bible says, it said, not only do you uh, go to your neighbors and, and, and everything uh, to your neighbors and, and, and go everywhere for all your neighbors and empty the vessels, do not gather but a few. And, and one of the things I've discovered is that when we in difficult times and hard moments, uh, we don't like to share with our neighbors. Uh, we, we, we don't like to tell nobody if we in hard times in difficult moments. I don't know if it's a sense of an embarrassment, but I do know that I'm a private person. I don't like to share much myself. And, and, and if I'm going through some difficult time and I ain't got no money, uh, uh, it, it's embarrassing to go to your neighbor's house and ask for anything. But, but y'all remember back in the day, you used to go to neighbors and borrow everything, uh, sugar, two box, whatever you need from the neighbors. But when we get in difficult times, we don't even want the neighbor to know that we're going through some storms. But I, but I suggest to you today, watch this, the Bible says, the prophet asked this woman to be, first of all, obedient to the message that God gave him, but then also get others involved. Uh, get others. Tell somebody else that you're going through. Help. Uh, tell somebody else you need a word of prayer because you're in difficult moments. But, but I just believe that when you're obedient to the word of God and you, get, uh, and you involve others in this situation with you, perhaps things can get better. Tap your Nate on the shoulder and say, neighbor, I ain't got it all together. I, I, I might need you. Uh, down the road and, and if you need me uh, you, you you come see me you, you you come see me too but we gotta we gotta we gotta realize we ain't in this thing all by ourselves uh, we need each other in the house of the Lord we we need each other in our community and so so not only is there an obedience factor but there is a uh, involving others in the community in the communities of the ministries of the church in the community of the ministries of the men's ministry the women's ministry the, the, the usher's ministry whatever ministry you in you need to tell somebody tell somebody I don't need much I need a little bit. Just give me a jar, <laughs> and we'll work it out. Give me a jar, uh, like the prophet says. It says, and when you are coming in, uh, you shall shut the door after you receive these jars. Now, 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 I, I, I've been to school a little bit, Deacon White, and, 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 I've, and I understand the, uh, the, you know, this thing in the text. He says, okay, uh, go get some jars, but what are you going to do with the jars? Um, uh, if you go get the jars, uh, what are you going to do with the jar? Uh, because all you got is a little bit. Uh, here, here it is, Frank. It, it, the Bible says, it says, now take what you got. And, and this is what I like in the Bible. It says, see, 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 faith is, is, the, is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. Uh, see, if we can see it, is too small. Uh, let me just tell you this little story I shared on Thursday. Uh, Bob study about I was watching uh, the Discovery Channel. And uh, wow, see, see, when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of shooting and a lot of guts, stuff, karate. And, uh, but as you get my age, 
uh, you, you, you taper that thing down and you begin uh, to watch some, 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 some shows. And, and, and Discovery Channel is my friend. And, and I was sitting there and uh, Trustee Bradley and watching the Discovery Channel and they had this thing about the zoo and in, in captivity was this in African impala. And this African impala uh, in, the, in the wild could actually stand still, jump six feet high, and move 12 feet forward. Uh, let me say it again. He could jump six feet high and move 12 feet forward. And, and, and I was like, wow. Uh, that, that, that thing can surely get it. That's probably why they named the car behind the Impala, uh, and, and because it can, it, can get, it, it can just really get down. But then the commentator said, uh, but he's in captivity in the zoo. And uh, my first thought before he mentioned anything was if he can jump six feet high and go 12 feet forward, then he can jump over that little bit of wall that y'all got in front of him. Because the wall was only five feet high. And so surely if you can jump six feet and 12 feet out, you can do what you want to do. But as I listen carefully, Brother Trustee Johnson, I've heard the commentator says, but the wall before the Impala is five feet high with no ceiling above, but it's solid and the Impala can't see through it. And, uh, and I begin to wonder, Deacon Cook, why, uh, why are they telling me this? Why, why should I hear what they're saying? Because, the, because what the commentator said was, he says, as long as the Impala can't see to the other side, uh, he will remain in captivity. And all I feel like I feel my help coming and I need to share with some saint of God the reason you are not escaping your situation is because the wall is, which is in front of you is blocking your vision. But as long as you know your abilities in God, you can jump six feet high and 12 feet out. You can do it. You got to believe you can do it. But faith is the such of the things hoped for, but the evidence of things you cannot see. And that's why many Christians are still where they are, because they can't see to the other side of the wall. But I came by to let you know tonight, on this Sunday morning, you can do whatever you need to do in the name of the Lord. Here it is in the Bible. Says this woman, had to go to knock on the doors of the neighbor's house. Baby, can I have your milk jug? Baby, can I have your inter vessels? Baby, can I have what you got in the house? Because the man of God told me to go and secure some vessels. And now I, I want you to see this too, because see, not only is it sounding crazy that you are going and collecting vessels from the neighbors, but you have to bring these vessels back to the house. And he said, go everywhere and bring them back to your home. Good God Almighty. Uh, see, sometimes God can ask us some stuff that might seem crazy and it might not seem like you can handle what he's asking you to do. But I want to tell you, if he's asking you to go and do what he wants you to do, surely you are able to handle your situation because in the might of God, you can handle everything. Here it is, the Bible says right here, it says that the woman did what the prophet says to do out of obedience and she went to others. But now, here comes the faith in her all. Uh, here it is right here, the faith in the all. Watch, watch this, just the Bible says, it says, then she came after barring her jugs from everybody, every neighbor, uh, empty jars, by the way, nothing was full. She comes back after her bottle collection and she comes to her house and, and when she had come in and, and, and began to shut the door behind her and her sons, then it says, now, this is the prophet saying, he said, now take that all you got and uh, fill the jaws. Uh, wait a minute, Reverend. 
You already said all she had was a flash. <laughs> and now she got all these jars on the kitchen table. Uh-huh, take it all. Just, just, just do it. Just go get them all and bring them in. And see, see, I, I got to tell somebody, see, when you're walking with God, I, I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds funny when God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and follow me in all your ways and I shall direct. I believe we got some Bible scholars in the house today. And so if that is the case, take your little bit. He said, now watch this. The Bible says, and go in your house, close your doors. See, but everybody can't come with you in this space. Every, come on now. Uh, if, you, if you ever notice in the biblical text when Tabitha had died, he said, no, let me just take Peter, James, and John with me. Shut everybody else out. And then she hollered, Tabitha Kumia, which means come here, Tabitha, from the dead. You can't take everybody with you. Not everybody's going to believe the supernatural thing. Not everybody's going to believe what God told you to do. That's why you got to go at it alone. You just go in your prayer closet, shut the door, and keep the folk outside that don't believe in the power and the movement of God because they will stifle your progress. Woo. Shut the door. Leave them out there. Oh, all they are and they says anyway. Uh, we, yeah. Who are you? Trusting God that way. Well, here it is. The Bible says, come with me to verse 5. It says, so she went in, uh, shut the door behind her and her sons. Only her because see, they were impacted by the death of the father. And so they knew mama was crying every night. They knew mama was down on her knees calling on the name of the Lord because she was, she, it doesn't say how faithful she was. It does say how faithful her husband was. But when you are hooked up with somebody who know who God is, I got to tell you, somebody ought to know that when you hook up with the Savior, that you are impacted by the side. <laughs> Uh, here it is. I'm impacted because my wife is a praying woman. Uh, I'm impacted because my mama knew who God was. I'm impacted because my grandmama drug me to church. Impacted. Is there anybody in the room who has been impacted by somebody else's faith? I don't know about y'all, but I'm here while I'm here. For a reason I'm here is because I've been impacted. Over here, mom, praying. <laughs> Out of the obedience of God, getting others involved, and now the faith she has in her own. Here it is now, watch this. She got all these jars on the kitchen table. I, I don't know whom I'm talking to, uh, but you, maybe you remember back in the day we used to collect bottles on the side of the road. <laughs> See, I, I'm 58. <laughs> and we used to take them down and put them in the wagon, drag them. <laughs> Get a nickel or a dime from the bottle. Come on now. Y'all ain't always had money in your pocket. <laughs> and so it reminded me of my own story. And this woman now is at this place. She's at this place where she's having to bring her boys in the room. Now, now the thing that I saw in the room was that when you put everybody out in the sense of silence in the room, uh, uh, it's, it's quiet in the room. Uh, and, and when, when, when uh, they would say those songs, uh, uh, come on in the room, come on in the room. Because who? 
Jesus in the room in the room in yes Lord see y'all 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 know that but now watch this here it is she's in the midst of the quiet moment her husband is gone her children are dependent Oh, mama, what do you do when you're at your wit's end, when you're at the very worst situation you can ever face? All you got is Jesus. And here it is now, watch this. The Bible says that she closed the door and then behind her and, and her sons and who brought the vessels in, they were still bringing in the vessels. And, and when they got there, she began to take the flat of anointing oil. Good God Almighty. And see, when you're dealing with God and his anointing, I want to tell you, it's the stuff you ain't never seen before begin to be manifested right before your eyes. Here is a situation just like that. The Bible says she took the oil after closing the door. I don't know if she prayed or not, but she's done what the prophet told her to do by taking uh, out of her obedience and getting the jars from the other folk. But now take your oil and do what you must do in the name of the Lord. Come on, I wish I had a witness in the room right now. Uh, uh, she took the oil and just her and the boys and said, bring me a vessel. She took the flash of oil, angel, and poured it into the first jar. Now, this is only a few ounces, but it must have had a six ounce and eight ounce jugs that she took the anointing oil and poured it into the first vessel, and the oil didn't stop. And so she took another vessel and poured it into that vessel. And she took another and poured it in into that vessel. And she took another and poured it in to that vessel and she took another and poured it in to that vessel and she took another and poured it in to that vessel and you said maybe wait wait me wait wait me wait, 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 uh, 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 help me out uh, what's happening with this little flash of oil? Well, let me just tell you. See, when you take your little bit, I tell you, God will get in the little bit of oil that you got. Uh, because it is already anointed. It is already used for the things of God. And so if you bring your little bit to the Lord, you get all up in this thing. And you just keep pouring it out until you run out of the vessel. She kept on pouring into the vessel. And she took another and poured into the vessel and then she took another and poured into the vessel and she took another and another and another I uh, guess what I just told you uh, is that when God is in this thing uh, your blessing would never run out uh, and she took another uh, and another uh, and poured into the vessel and then all of a sudden her boy says mama we out of jaws uh, I don't know what you doing over there but she said it is the Lord uh, working it out for my good. It's the Lord that showed up on time. It's the Lord that came through when we didn't think we could make it. God is stretching it so that we can do what we need to do. I wish I had a witness in the room that when you put it in the Lord's hand, God, we work that thing out. Take your little bit and put it in his hands. And I tell you, God, we I said, God, we I said, God will make this thing work out for your good. But hold on a minute. What are you going to do with the jaws? I'm glad that you asked. Goodbye, Mount Pleasant. I'm on my way out. She came and took the jaws and went back to the prophet. What can we do now? And the prophet says in verse 7, it says he told her that look here, you take the jaws and sell the oil and get what you need to pay the debtors so they won't take your boys. But then the rest of it, you live off of it. You and the boys. And I want to tell somebody what happened with the little flash. I don't know. But all I know is out of obedience and involving others, she took 
the oh, and she trusted in the Lord. And so what I got to tell you today is what the little bit you got is enough. The little bit you have is enough. But you got to put it in the Lord's hand. And God will. I said God will. I said God will. God will take care of you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Don't fool me now. I won't God do it. Yes, he will. So that's all right. Goodbye, Mount Plus. I'm going to take my little bit and put it in the Lord's hand because in his hand is enough. I said in God's hand is enough. So make your way to the master house. Make your way to the altars of God and tell the Lord thank you and put it in his hand. Walk away, baby. Sleep at night and watch God work this thing out. Stop worrying. Stop crying. God will take care of you. Sweet times may come. Trouble may be on leaning side. But God will take care of you. I said, my God will take care of you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't God do it for you? Put it in his hand. Because I heard 2,000 years ago, there was a man that died on Calvary. He put his life in his father's hand. And he came back to life one Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. You got enough. Put it in his hand. Watch God work that thing out. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Somebody needs to come down to the altar and put it in the Lord's hand. God, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you my boy. I'm giving you my child. I'm giving you my husband. I'm giving you my marriage. Put it in the Lord's hand. Put it in God's hand. Tell the Lord, I'm giving it back. I'm giving it back. I can't handle it. I'm giving to you. I'm putting it in the Lord's hand. Somebody say yeah. Yeah. I'm giving you what I got. I'm giving to you everything. Pour out your blessing. I'm giving it back. I'm giving it back. I'm giving it back. I ain't got enough. But Lord, I'm giving it back.
some of the stuff we're not able to do what we need to do but God can God can and I want to tell you today if you put it in his hands the prophet said to the woman out of your obedience and you're involving others your faith in that all the anointing inside of you God will turn that thing that little bit and provide for each and every one of your needs and not only do you take the leftovers live off it because I see you in the future you look much better God is working in your life you just need to understand you just take that little bit you say God I ain't got enough to give nobody just take that little bit give it to the Lord and then he'll multiply he'll give you what you need hallelujah he'll give you what you need and much more somebody needs to hear this today that struggle night in and night out wondering how you're going to do it I've learned personally and privately I got to give it to Jesus and he and listen he stretches it I don't know if you've ever seen it stretch but God is stretching the little bit that you got and so Mount Pleasant we we leave you now but I want you to know keep trusting God Keep trusting God. You be the impala in your life and keep leaving and moving forward. And God will do the rest. God will do the rest. Come on, let's, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the movement of the Spirit today. We thank you, God, for reminding us that, that we have enough if we bring it to you. And we take the little bit we got and put it in your hands and trust you at your word. You can multiply. We may not understand your multiplications, but we've seen it demonstrated and we know it for ourselves. And so now, God, we're getting ready to leave this space, but I need you to encourage each and every heart here that's here today, that's down at this altar, whether they're online and they need to get in touch with us, uh, just put it in the chat that you want prayer, you want salvation, whatever you need. And I want to tell you, we'll respond to you. If you're here today at this altar, and you need God to respond through prayer, salvation, whatever you need. He'll do it for you. But in the season of celebration of the life of Jesus, I got to remind you, he's the reason for our season. He was born so that we could die and live for eternity. And so we we'll thank you for him on today. But now we are leaving the space on the Sunday morning. But I encourage you, keep your heads up. Keep your hand in the Lord. And tell somebody that I'm going through. I need a little help every now and again. And God will make ways out of nowhere. I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. And so now, God, we're dismissing from this place but never from thy presence. It is in the name of Jesus, oh God, we pray. And we say together, 
Amen. Amen. Hold on a second. The Lord's put on my heart. Listen, I can't preach like that and there's somebody at the altar that needs some serious help. If there's someone at this altar and you need some assistance financially and you need some help, who am I speaking to? Who am I speaking to? You're not ashamed. This is not to shame you. And you just need some help. You just need some assistance financially. Amen. And you're here today and you just need some help. You just need to stand right here. Is anyone else here that needs some financial help? Amen. Amen. Come here, come here. Don't, don't, don't move. Don't, don't move away from your blessing. Stand right here. Come here, Deborah. Stand right here. Who else needs some help? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Listen, my wife don't even know I'm going to do this. But for one, two, three, four, five, I'm gonna we we gonna give y'all one hundred dollars a piece. All five of you all. We gonna cash out for you or whatever we gotta do to get it to you. But we're gonna give each one of you five one hundred dollars. And I'm asking that is there anyone in the congregation like to join me? You come up and get their name, their cash app, and bless them with me, if you're able. I'm gonna give, my wife and I are gonna give $500 today to these young, these persons. Because I know it's Christmas, and you're struggling, don't know how you're gonna make it. I can't just speak it if I don't do it. And the Lord put on my heart to bless you today, my wife and I. But if somebody else needs a blessing with these five, or like to bless these five, won't you join me and give what you have, whether in your purse or whether you want to cash out, bring it to the altar now. Come on. Bring it to the altar. Hallelujah. You like to bless these five, or if there's more, come on, just, just put it in their hand. Put it in the hands now. Come on. Um, and I need your cash app. I need to send you some money. I don't carry the money, but I'm going to give you the money. Talk to these around you and give them, give them your cash app. We're going to bless you all today. Come on, come on. All right, here's, here's some more money. Grandpa, give me that 20 right there. Hallelujah, oh, no. oh. Come on, come on. Each one twenty, okay. Four. Oh, no.
on, sing that a little louder. God is blessing us. God is blessing us to bless somebody else. Thank you, Janet. second fellas listen I, i'm gonna i'm gonna get this cash out of my hand but i need y'all to go on the other side with trustee johnson um folk folk are giving online to bless you all so please go with trustee johnson and Aaliyah. um we're gonna cash out you we're gonna give you what you need amen because god is god is god is in the blessing business go go with those two hallelujah May the peace of God, <laughs> may the grace of God be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. Mm-hmm.